Six years ago, Richard and Sarah Turnbull quit the rat race in Leeds to live the good life on an olive farm in Tuscany. Now the family are on a mission to try and become totally self-sufficient. This week, Sarah wades into a swarm of angry bees in search of pure Tuscan honey. You have this instinctive feeling just to stay very still or run screaming. Going, ah! And they introduce another British family to pig business, Italian style. Is the whole of the pig edible? Just look at all that crackling. <laughs> Richard and Sarah Turnbull and their four boys are working hard to live the dream life in Tuscany. Home for them is a stone farmhouse set on eight acres of steep olive groves. This summer, they've started a new horse breeding business to try and boost their farm's earning potential. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to make a business breeding them and selling them to Italians. They're also relying on a good crop from their 350 olive trees. The harvest will be turned into top quality olive oil which on a good year could net them up to £5,000 of vital income. Wow, super duper. Will you put some on mine? Oh, that's just right, that. <laughs> Sarah's also hoping to widen her market by selling it in a new virtual farm shop, along with other choice bits of local produce. We'll go into selling other people's stuff online too, which uh, is quite... It's, it's a nice thing to do. It's promoting the area, promoting the, this area's produce. In fact, so keen is Sarah to make this new venture a success, she's even asked her mum, Ray, to come over from the UK to help run it. She will help me with all the administration of running an online shop and also help me with the, the practical side of packing things up and um, hopefully this will contribute towards her income while she's here because she can't just come and... She's, we haven't got enough money for her to come and, and just sort of be here and, and it will be lovely and under the Tuscan sun kind of thing. She's got to work. OK, start going. Quick, quick, quick. To prepare for Ray's arrival, they're sprucing up the drive. This is Operation Clean Up Casa del Sole after a whole winter and spring of Richard being messy. Uh, I've now got, you've got to get it clean and tidy because my mum's really finicky about things like that. Half a tonne of gravel may not exactly be the red carpet treatment, but hopefully it'll remove the first few potholes of Ray's new Tuscan life. OK, right, so we can leave them doing that and have a cup of tea. All right, boys, yeah. OK. Jack, on with it. <laughs> Union rules. You get a break at your next birthday. As well as income from their farm, Richard and Sarah have also started hiring themselves out as expert property troubleshooters, helping the wave of Brits following them to this hidden paradise. You've got vines, you've got a bit of vegetables growing, you've got some olive trees, fruit trees, then woodland below. One such family is the Agassiz. Richard helped them buy their dream property for €135,000, a tumble-down stone farmhouse on 12 acres that had no roof and no running water. The Agassiz put themselves in what can only be described as an appalling situation by any reasonable person's standards. You know, they've spent the winter in tents and they've had no water, they've had no toilet to flush, they've not had a wash for six months. It's... it's... It's unbelievable, but they seem very happy with it. We'd kind of just fill a bucket full of water and uh, wash straight from the bucket. When it started getting cold, it was very much a quick strip off, clean down and get the clothes back on as quickly as possible, because also we don't have heating or anything like that. So far, the renovation has cost €30,000, but there's still a long way to go, and they're rapidly running out of cash. Have to cut down on the food portions maybe a little bit. Richard thinks they need to make their 12 acres of land start working for them. And he thinks he's got just the answer. Pigs. <laughs> Fortunately, he knows just who to go to for a good deal on a used pig. His neighbour Sergio, a traditional Italian smallholder. Go on, Marco, let's go find a pig. Is there anything 
Cosa? Non ho sentito. Ma che non piace penso ci sia poco, però magari gli può far male. Ci possono essere delle controindicazioni, ma meglio non dare. Sì, sono dei chestnuts. 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 Yeah, at the end result is, you know, bacon sandwiches, but in the process is if they're kind of making use of what you've got on your land, mm. then uh, it's sort of two birds with one pig. Yeah. How much roughly would a pig cost if you bought it in this kind of season? Costa mi sembra circa 3 euro al kilo. Ah, okay. 3 euro al kilo. 3 euros a kilo. 50 kilo, 150 euro. So now you're looking about 150 euros mm -hmm. for a, a pig like this. Yeah. yeah. If you were to get some now that were three, four months old, mm. then January time um, would, would be the, the time to slaughter it. So seeing them in the flesh, mm. as it were, still an attractive proposition. Yeah. It, is. it is. Yeah, it is for me. Um, Don't you think you might have a problem with killing it at the end of the day? No, no. no. I, I'd, uh, well, I eat meat, so we give it a good life, then <laughs> quite right. And, uh, I'll quite, quite happily right. eat it. That's why I suggested we call them breakfast and dinner, you see. You don't forget. Touching sentimental names yeah. there, yeah. you've chosen. I mean, it, it My heart is... But as Richard and Sarah know all too well, there's no room for sentiment when you're trying to be self-sufficient. Wow. Just look at all that crackling. Yeah. <laughs> I think it would be uh, a good idea, especially with all the land that we've got, and to become as self-sufficient as possible. Um, so it says that one pig will feed a family for a year, so obviously it would benefit us to, to uh, buy a pig and look after it for the nine months until it comes to the butchering. After a two-day drive across Europe, Sarah's mum, Ray, finally arrives. She crunches to a halt on the newly laid gravel. And is met with a sparkling welcome by all the family. Come on, we've got fireworks! Come on! We've got fireworks! We've got fireworks. Yay! 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 Well, I'm not hugging you whilst you're sparkling like that. <laughs> You've got to have a sparkle, Mama. Hi, Richard. Hi. <laughs> if you could just nip back to Nice, because they've got some swings on special offer that we'd, uh, we just thought we'd get two for the price of one. No you way. Mind. I'm never going on a motorway ever in my life again. <laughs> Cheers. Well done, boys. All Ray wants is a cold beer and a warm bed. Oh, the next morning, Ray gets settled in. It must be books. Day one, I'm still on adrenaline. I just am so excited and so, well, delighted to be here. Like many Brits moving to Italy, she's brought just a few essentials. Absolute necessity here. A year supply, tea bags, Vegemite, various. Oh, and a torch. There's never enough of those around. And tea's not the only thing she just can't do without. It's a cat flap that responds to my cat's microchip letter rack. <laughs> you never know, somebody might write to me. A quick mashed potato. It's a weeding implement. Cat hair, get rid of her. A packet of stuffing. <laughs> I think I must have panicked over that one. <laughs> I don't even like stuffing. <laughs> Having just about drawn the line at the kitchen sink, Ray has, however, also brought her cat and three chickens. Okay, so, broody chicken. I think we might have problems with my cat integrating with Sarah's cats. Um, however, don't know, haven't tried that yet. That she's, uh, she's got in separation at the moment. But Sarah's cats are uh, semi-feral. They have to fend for themselves, catch snakes, birds, mice. They bloody don't. They get fed twice a day. Semi-feral. <laughs> fed twice a day. Not fed on demand, admittedly, but fed twice a day. Semi-feral. You're crazy, woman. <laughs> At least Ray's chickens seem to be settling in nicely. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! <laughs> oh no. A chicken fight already. 
What were we saying about integrating? I think the chickens are not going to integrate. Sadly, Ray's featherweight bantam is no match for Sarah's big, fat Italian mama hen. The next morning, Sarah puts her mum straight to work. She's looking for new produce to sell in her farm shop and has got a taste for Tuscan honey. Dammi a mamma, Ray. Lorenzo has 500 hives and millions of bees. Italian bees are gentler than northern European ones, but Sarah and Ray aren't taking any chances. Suits you. Yeah, it does not. <laughs> Okay. These smocks may not be the height of Italian fashion, but they'll soon be the only thing standing between Ray, Sarah and about 500,000 bees. Did you need your glasses? I should put my glasses on. Si usa per tenere calme l'acqua, insomma, il fumo le le stordisce un po', le rende un po' They're using the smoke and it, it's um, chestnut bark that they're using, and that's to calm the bees down um, and make them go all sleepy so that they don't sting you. Once the bees are nice and dopey, Lorenzo blasts them out of the hives using an enormous blower. There's so many, there's clouds and swarms of bees. You have this instinctive feeling just to stay very still or run screaming, going, ah! Sarah's keen to see the whole process to work out if it's something they could do on their land. I'm loving the bee thing. It's amazing. Yes, it is labour intensive if you're doing a lot, but one hive, two hive, just for our own, you know, our own stuff. I, I'm, yeah, I'm up for it. But as Sarah and Ray are about to discover, blasting bees from their hives is one thing, extracting the honey, another thing entirely. I wouldn't want to do this kind of production myself. It's too intensive. Uh, buongiorno. Yes, sono Richard. While Richard continues on his mission to help the Agassiz bring home the bacon. So there you go, it's a 100% investment. It's mid-morning in northern Tuscany, and the heat is already rising into the 80s. Having seen how Lorenzo gets the honey from the hives, Sarah and Ray are now keen to discover how he puts it into pots. I'm desperately looking for producers with our ethos, which is it has to be organic, it has to be local, has to have a low carbon footprint, and has to involve a lot of recycling. So far, Lorenzo's operation is getting a tick in every single box. Wow! How cool is that? Nothing goes to waste here. Even the excess wax goes to make candles, crayons and beauty products. I'm always in the back of my mind thinking, can I do that? Maybe I could do that. Actually, my mum just pointed out, Sarah, there's no way you can do that because it's her that would have to clean all this up. She says she's not. Lorenzo's honey operation runs from early spring through to late summer, producing six varieties, from plants that flower at different times of the year, each one with a unique flavour. If they pass the taste and price test, Sarah will stock them in her farm shop. <laughs> I really love that taste. Mm. It's incredibly sweet, though, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Texture, mm. very syrupy. Quite so bellissimo. Almost like molasses, licorice sort of taste. It does make you go, oh, that was sweet. Cosa è questo? Lime tree. Lime, lime tree. tree. Well, it doesn't taste of limes. It's quite mild, isn't it? My mouth is full of uh, sweetness. They all taste very, very different. Toffee. Wow. This is a caramel. Thank you. It's buonissimo, eh? <laughs>
The toffee-flavoured one called Melata is going down a treat, and Sarah's keen to know what flower it comes from. Sometimes you see on a tree the, the sticky stuff on the floor underneath. And, you see, yeah, and on, on cars, and you think that maybe it came from the tree. But it didn't. It came from the insects on the tree who make this sticky stuff using the tree's sap and bark and or whatever they're using it. And anyway, they overmake it. And the bees come along and go, ho ho, already made sugar, let's have some of that. And that's what it is. It's it's honey made from the insect made sugar. How incredible. Sarah decides to stock three kinds of honey, but needs to agree a good price with Lorenzo to make it worth her while. Lorenzo said that the um, 500 um, gram ones, straight from him, about three euros fifty. The acacia is slightly more expensive, about four euros twenty um, for the same amount. Mm -hmm. So the, the pricing is fantastic. Obviously, that's um, a wholesale; it's not retail. Thank you so much, Lorenzo. Grazie mille. She's counting on making a 30% profit from selling the honey in her shop, and if it really takes off, plans to have her own hives in the future. <laughs> Meanwhile, Richard's still trying to lead the Agus family down the path to self-sufficiency. He's shown them some pigs, and they seemed keen. So seeing them in the flesh, Still an attractive proposition. Is it? it is, yeah, it is for me. But as he knows all too well, raising animals is one thing, killing and eating them not quite so straightforward. So he's brought the Aguses to a traditional family-run abattoir to show them exactly what will happen to their own pig if they go ahead and get one. If you want to see that? Yeah, you don't I'm, have to. I'm it? up for the full thing. Yeah, yeah, they're up for it, yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you up for it, Keish? No. No? No. Me neither. Me neither. No, no, no. no. I'll eat it. I'll eat it. Fair enough. Although Richard's been farming for six years, he's still a bit squeamish about killing things. I couldn't go home now and one of our horses not be there, knowing that it had been slaughtered this morning, that I could eat it. So I certainly couldn't do it with a pig. I couldn't do it with any. We, we can't even, I, you know, I can't even kill one of our chickens. Sure enough, Richard opts to stay outside. Dad kindly offers to keep him company, leaving the rest of the family to witness the grizzly bits. It's the first time they've seen anything like this. You don't think they'll be a bit queasy or anything? Or... I'd be really surprised if they were. It's not going to put them off? No. No. It won't put Victoria off food anyway. <laughs> At traditional abattoirs like this, everything's done on site. Local smallholders bring their animals in one end and walk out the other with enough meat to feed their family for a year. So how was that then? Right, it's quick, it was clean. They're stunned and they just fall asleep. It's like watching Dad nod off at the TV or whatever. <laughs> yeah, oh, nice. <laughs> but, um, I, wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to watch my own pig, but no. at least I know what, what they go through. Attached to the abattoir is the butchers. They take the fresh carcass and turn it into a bewildering array of delicious Italian delicacies. Luigi lived in Glasgow for 10 years, so speaks fluent English with a Scottish accent. Is, is the whole of the pig edible? We eat everything over the pig, lungs, everything. So there you go, it's a 100% investment. Luigi's keen to show them exactly what they could get from their own pig. Famous Italian fat, lardo. The choncha? The head, yep. the head goes in, the, in the strings. Okay. The tongue and the, the lungs, the skin of the pig with blood, and then we cook it again, you know? You want to taste it? Despite the fact Vicky's just seen a pig meet its maker, she's more than happy to ensure it didn't die in vain. You need some bread and a nice glass of wine. <laughs> what's the best bit of the pig for an Italian? What's, what's the piece de resistance? It's prosciutto, it's buono. Vicky's clearly got the stomach to be a pig farmer, so Richard tries to enlist Luigi to help seal the deal. If they bought a pig mm. to you, mm. would you, and they said we'd like some of this, yeah. some of that, some of the other, you would do all that for them? Yeah. In the winter, but not, not in the summer, in no, the winter. No. Yeah. Around about December or November, you know, around about that time. According to Luigi, it's best to fatten a pig up over the summer and kill it before the really cold weather sets in. Pig, still a goer as an idea? 
I think it's definitely definite. definite something to uh, look into seriously. Yeah, and as the best time to butcher them is November, December, so we want to be looking at getting one just after Christmas, so February okay. time, I suppose. So Richard's finally persuaded them to get a pig in the new year. But he's also got a cunning plan to kickstart their small holding right now. I think they need to be uh, getting used to having animals around the place, so uh, we just got a little present that we thought would uh, break them in gently into the uh, self-sufficiency life. Hi, how you doing? You know, you've been here for ages and we haven't got you a, a housewarming present yet. Yeah, right. right. Yes. Got you one. No, we don't want um, one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Take your pick. They come in four yeah, different four, sizes. Four, actually, yes. Four. No, 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 no. But it's one of Richard's special housewarming presents, so he'll need 10, 15 minutes just to um, prepare it for you. <laughs> Keith, Jerry, Reese, and Vicky. Hens are an easy first step towards self sufficiency, but Sarah's worried the carnivorous agassiz won't be able to resist a bit of a roast. Egg layers, not eaters, though. They, they, they don't, go, don't, don't go eating them. <laughs> that one's your special present, Vicky. That's your happy birthday present. <laughs> the locals breed rabbits for the pot rather than as pets. So far, Vicky's wanted to eat everything that moves, but it seems this fluffy bunny has softened her. Oh, I don't know. He's so cute. This might actually be a pet. I mean, he's a gift. Yeah. Go on, in go. Go. So rabbits and chickens are quite happy together. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pigs after Christmas, but for the time being, a rabbit to look after, some chickens to look after, and some fresh eggs in the morning. And... Fantastic. We get that bacon going as well. I'm yeah. in heaven up here. Bacon, bacon and eggs. <laughs> bacon and eggs. They came here to be self-sufficient. They came here to kind of live the good life, have the animals, love the nature, work the land. So, yeah, I think it will refocus them onto their dream. Next time, Sarah continues her hunt for exotic local produce and finds out how to harvest beans the Italian way. Look, it's, it looks very much like something that Richard would make. A bit wobbly. And an English crime writer looking for an inspirational Tuscan retreat gets slightly more than he bargained for. He entered the room, he entered the room and, and vomited. I could, I could smell death immediately. <laughs> so he left. To find out more about living overseas, go to channel4.com slash four homes for the latest information on moving abroad. The next night, where there's Mugler's Brass, but only if there are grapes at Chateau Monty.